Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl, Jackie Ina. If you are new here, welcome. Have a seat, cause you're gonna like what you're about to watch. Today I'm gonna be showing you guys how to get flawless, perfect foundation application, but with a twist. Cause you know your girl always has to do something a little bit more relevant. I'm gonna be doing this TikTok style. So the TikTok makeup phenomenon is actually quite interesting because I feel like YouTube is kind of like the senior class that graduated and went on to do great things and go on and go forth and sow their seeds. Whereas TikTok, this is shade. I'll just say it. I'm not even gonna say it's no shade. It is a little shade. TikTok is like the junior class that after the seniors graduated, they were like, hey guys, let's act like none of they did ever existed and just take credit for it ourselves. That's kind of like the vibe I get from TikTok because the girls on TikTok do love to copy. Nobody can deny that that's facts. A lot of us have laid the groundwork for these techniques and hacks on YouTube for years, but they're just now going viral on TikTok. It's very fascinating. And straight up, some of these tips even come from me. So I'll be looking at stuff going viral and I'm like, I like the way you presented this as something you discovered. Yeah, it's cool. So today I'm gonna be walking you through some of those techniques and we're going to also be doing this video in partnership with NYX Cosmetics. This is actually a really big partnership for me and I'm very grateful because one, I'm grateful for all of my sponsorships, but NYX Cosmetics is also a brand I've been using and loving on my channel for years. They have bomb stuff. They actually just launched a new foundation that I think y'all, if you haven't already tried it, are going to freaking love. So without further ado, let's jump right in. Oh, by the way, stay tuned to the end of the video. I have a special little surprise. I'll explain later. So the first TikTok makeup hack slash tip is actually one that I've been doing for years. I did not admit this. I just wanna make it very clear. I'm not the originator of this. I think it just kind of became like something that everybody knew me for. And that is priming your skin and then putting a light layer of translucent powder right after. Let me just talk to y'all about the thought process behind this. I started realizing whenever I would put on liquid foundation right on top of my skin as is, I was like, I wonder if there is a way to kind of like minimize the shine because I noticed that the foundation would look really, really shiny right after application. So then I was like, wait, I saw Alyssa forever doing this. And I was like, yeah. I need, I need to try this. Honestly, it's brilliant. Now, I do prefer to use a translucent powder that is like my skin tone because to me, it basically provides, oh, I need to prime first, dummy. I'm gonna use the marshmallow primer. I like a primer, even though I have oily combination skin. That does matter because the steps that I do in my routine may not work for you. If you have desert Sahara dry skin, I cannot help you. I like using a primer that is a bit of like a lotion. It feels like a skincare. I've seen a lot of people talk about the marshmallow primer, actually. The one thing about foundation the more you try to dry everything out too, too much, in my opinion, the worse that it looks, it don't last, like it just don't last that long. I know the girls care about skin now, but some of us still are ugly. So I do like to give a little bit of glam, but it doesn't necessarily mean my skin has to have like five layers of dethroned shine. Like I am not trying to look like a Dothraki. I'm just not. So do you see the way my skin looks hydrated, but not matte? For me right here, this tends to be my sweet spot when it comes to foundation. If it's too matte, it's too cakey after a while, and it actually does the opposite. After a few hours, it gets way more oily. And then if it's too dewy, it's disgusting. It doesn't last long. This to me is my happy medium. Now watch this. My light layer of translucent powder only in my T-zone. Don't it look like I already found, don't it look like I already have foundation on? Exactly, exactly. All this, keep on watching. How to prevent your foundation from creasing. Always hydrate your skin prior to makeup. Prime using a smoothing primer to fill lines and pores. Use extra powder where you crease and avoid caking on the foundation. Okay, what's funny is this clip, this person actually so used my picture like in the video. Cause I'm like, I know them lips. I remember that thumbnail from my video. That's definitely me. Now this application does not have to be perfect y'all. Think less is more. Don't load on the powder the way you would bake. It's okay to like plop it on your sponge, blot off the first couple layers and then go in. This is I think also a great tip for the person who gets a lot of separation on their nose. I don't like putting foundation on my nose because I don't really feel like it's necessary. But the next best thing to not not making your nose look naked compared to the rest of your face is doing this tip right here. And if you have a problem with like the separating all throughout the day, this is gonna be your, your best friend, your bridesmaid, your sister-in-law, and your RA. Like it just does it for me. I also find that I tend to put less foundation on my forehead. So the next best thing is the light layer of translucent powder. Does it not look like I have foundation on my skin right now? It does. Don't lie and say it don't. It do, stop lying. So the next step that's going around a lot, and this is actually one of my favorite 
is applying blush underneath the foundation. Underpainting is definitely making its rounds on TikTok. And this is something that a lot of professional makeup artists have been doing for years, y'all. Like I've seen Scott Barnes, I've seen Scott Barnes do this. I've seen, I, I wanna say I've seen like Ernesto Casillas do this, Samuel Rauda doing this. All of the makeup artists that I look up to and admire professionally that are also like kind of influential do this technique. You start off with blush and because the NYX I know a lot of the TikTok hack videos that you've probably seen here on YouTube are more like testing TikTok hacks, but it actually for me makes more sense to just walk you through the routine because these are all tips that a lot of us as makeup artists have been doing for years. And there's nothing wrong with that. I'm loving that these are becoming more mainstream anyway. Okay, so I have my blush placed. I'm gonna blend this out. It is a cream product. I'll be honest and say this does take some practicing. It's not for, it's not for everybody. I don't even necessarily know if I would recommend this for like first time. I don't, I don't even necessarily know if I would recommend this for somebody who's like just starting out of makeup. But once you get it, girl, like it's just so pretty. Like I feel like this in itself is the look. But I got some place to go, so I'm putting on way more makeup if you don't mind if that's okay with you. Shout out to the girls who are still glam underneath the mask because I admire the commitment. I really do. One thing I know you guys have also probably seen a lot of, which is, okay, I put a lot on this cheek, but it's actually okay because we are still going to put product on top. Now with this hack, I know you guys have seen a lot of people doing bright red lipstick for this hack, or sometimes they use like color corrector. I have thoughts about that. The thing is when you load on as much product as some of these girls are doing, you actually start changing the color of the foundation. And if you're cool tone, that's fine. And if you want, your foundation to look a little bit more flushed and more red, that's totally fine. I just feel like it's a little too flushed for some of us that are melanated. No, I'm just saying. I I just feel like red is a very jarring color and I personally don't think you need that much product. Unless that's, of course, the look that you're going for. One thing I see a lot is people carrying on over their nose. And I remember doing my makeup one day and I was doing this technique. I wasn't putting the blush on my nose and someone commented, put it on your nose. And I was like, what the hell are they talking about? And why are they telling me to do this? But I guess the trend had been making its round on TikTok. And yeah, like it is a, it is a thing, you can do it, but it's not necessary, but it is cute. It almost kind of has like that flush, like almost like sickly, like you had been wiping your nose look all day. And some people like that look. You know faux freckle high, like this is their whole spiel. Is this like the e-girl look? I've been trying to figure out what the hell e-girl means still to this day. That is the auntiest thing I've ever said. Wow, no shame. All right, so now that I look like James and the Giant Peach, we now need to contour. I do like to contour under my foundation because I'm more of a bronzer girl. So, so the contour is really just here now so that the foundation don't look like one flat color. Bronzer is what I want you to see when I'm done with my makeup. I contour under the foundation just so that the foundation itself doesn't look all monotone. Does that make sense? Y'all follow me? Do you see, do we see each other? Something that's slightly different that I've been doing with contouring is I don't use contours as dark as I used to. I actually use something that's a little bit closer to my skin tone so it doesn't stand out as much. I came, I blushed, I contoured. The girls love using setting spray in Steps. And I've been doing this for a minute. I don't recall actually seeing anybody else do it. I just throw my hands up to this one. <laughs> I didn't shave. I'm gonna take a bit of the matte finish and I'm gonna actually do setting spray now. Most people use setting spray as a last step, but I've been telling y'all for years that when you actually do it throughout the makeup, it actually benefits you and lasts way longer. And I actually remember learning this from a cosmetic chemist who told me that's how setting spray works. It's not just for finishing as a last step. When you actually mix it in with your complexion products, including what I'm about to just do, it lasts so much longer. Oh, and it just also feels good when it's hot. Yo, it's getting hot here in LA. Like what in the devil's butt is going on? What did I do? I just bought a bunch of sweaters and I'm mad. Now it's hot. I'm mad. It's cool because I'm going to New York next week. So I get to definitely use the sweaters. I'm gonna need some nose plugs as well. The New York be stank. We're gonna conceal. We're still in the underpainting phase of this flawless foundation routine. We need to conceal under our makeup. So the old school way of applying concealer was triangles. Okay, it was triangles, it was squares, it was heart shapes, people was drawing the White House under their eyes, maps of Georgia. It was a lot of filibustering going on underneath the eyes. We don't do that no more. So now the girls on TikTok have adopted this kind of like facelift technique with concealing under the eyes. And I've actually been kind of here for it. However, the thing they don't tell you is this tip does not necessarily work for everyone. So the tip to, the tip, <laughs> 
<laughs> do it on the tip, do it on the tip, do it, do it. Let me stop, let me stop. I've already labeled this video not for children anyway, so it don't even matter. <laughs> so typically what you see on TikTok is people concealing inner most part of their eye and then the outer most part of the eye and leaving this alone, which is cute, sure. Works for some of us, it's all right. What they don't tell you is when you have like dark circles or like me, I have like really deep set like under eye lines. So like a lot of times I really need the coverage to go there. I've seen people trying this technique and have walked away feeling like, all right, this part of the community is underserved. What are we gonna do here? What, what What's gonna happen? So what you can actually do is just go back to color correcting and you can color correct these areas if you have dark circles or if you just need a little bit more coverage. So immediately under my eye, this is where I really could use the most brightness. I'm gonna take a red concealer and just, if you know anything about me, I'm gonna do stuff in steps, okay? Going in with just one product, although yes, you probably think, why do I need all this product? It's that expensive! But this stuff serves a purpose. I color corrected, so then I could do the less is more technique on top of it, but really I kind of cheated. I've kind of cheated because I've corrected this area and it already looks brightened and even. By the way, this is the Can't Stop, Won't Stop concealer from NYX Cosmetics. Let me show you the difference between what this side is about to look like versus this side. And also, you don't have to just stop with the concealer here and here. I actually like highlighting in these areas of my under eye, but for the middle, I will take a concealer that's literally like my skin tone or yeah, like just slightly lighter. I don't highlight as light as I used to anymore. I'm gonna take a little bit of cappuccino and there you go, you have a sandwich. Put your skin tone shade or something a little bit darker in the middle and your highlights in the inner corner and the outer corner. And it does give the face lift effect, but you still get coverage. Cause some of us are still ugly. God damn, these little TikTok girls like like, girl, I'm ugly. Nah, I'm just playing. I've never claimed ugly. Like, what does that even mean? Have y'all heard of that word? I've never heard of that before. Now, when you're blending this out, this is your chance to work around where you applied your cream blush just to kind of like soften it out and even it out. I know it seems counterproductive because you're putting products on top, but that's the point. Like, it's supposed to kind of look like it's flush from within. Whereas blush five, six years ago was literally sitting on top of our faces and I'll be the first person to put my hands up and say I was guilty, your honor, I'm guilty. But that was a look and that was popular. Don't know if you can visually see the differences between this side, which is less coverage, didn't color correct, also did not add like a skin tone color to kind of like mediate, versus this eye, it's still medium-ish coverage. I didn't fully, fully cover the under eye, but as you can see, to me, this looks a little bit more makeup ready. It looks a little bit more glam. Now this would also be the step where you could add another couple of sprays with your setting spray because it really, honestly does not hurt to. Also a great tip for people who tend to kind of move slow because the setting spray will kind of like reactivate the products again. So when they set, you can actually blend them out. Here's some makeup hacks that you need to add to your routine right now. Your foundation will turn out better if you correct your spots before you apply foundation with concealer. Now this is actually a great tip for somebody who wants coverage without actually slathering the whole bit of coverage all over their face. This is a very effective way to kind of like save foundation in a way. And also you get to take advantage of the products that you otherwise wouldn't use because you know the coverage isn't there. So as you can see, I have a spot there on my cheek and also there and there. So what we just did is we added a quick little veil of coverage so that now we don't have to cover our whole entire faces just to care about that one spot. Just for that one spot. Like think of how much product we really do be putting on our faces to sometimes just really address super small microscopic areas that really are the only problem. I've always loved my skin. I've just been like, okay, yeah, like I love my skin around the spots and around the acne. And if you can just look at your skin that way, I think you also can be a lot more optimistic and you can worry a little bit less about the blemishes. It's something that I always have to deal with, so I don't know, maybe that helps you guys. Waiting for the concealer to dry for a few seconds and then blending it out with the brush actually makes it more full coverage. Okay, so there's a lot to unpack here. I've seen this tip a lot on TikTok specifically. Yes, applying concealer and then letting it dry down for a bit is definitely a game changer. The problem is y'all definitely saw that for me. I mean, it's not a problem. Like I don't mind. I really don't mind people using the tips that I share because that's why they're there. Like I, that's literally why I post them. I post them to you guys' benefit, but it would be nice to be credited, you know? And like, I'm sure other artists probably feel the same way. But anyway, I've been talking about this for quite some time. I learned this tip out of laziness. 
I would put on my makeup in between doing stuff or I'd, I'd be running late. So what I would do is I would put my concealer on first and then I would do something else. And I don't know why I was letting my concealer sit, but that's what I was doing. And I started realizing, wait a minute, wait a wait there, something shifted. Most of us use a sponge to buff out our concealers, right? I mean, you're my kind of people, if you're using a sponge, if you're using a brush, I ain't speaking to you. I'm totally kidding, these videos for everyone, stop, let me stop. If you use a sponge like I do, I noticed that if the product was a little bit more wet, it was literally just getting soaked up from the sponge. And I wasn't really getting the true product. I felt like I had to keep layering it on and layering it on. It was actually taking me longer. So what I started doing whenever I was running late, or doing like in the middle of doing something was letting my concealer dry down for a bit and then I was going into blend and then I started realizing it kind of stays in place. All you have to do is just kind of blend the edges and it looks so much nicer. So that's exactly how I discovered that and how I started doing that. I never not let my concealer dry down. It really does work. It definitely works for somebody who, once again, maybe doesn't want to use a ton of product. And y'all, I never used to highlight my mustache. Yes, I, I do have a stash I, about that time. I need to shave in the next couple days. Maintenance Mondays. If you aren't already following your girl on TikTok, why aren't you? Why aren't you? Serious question though. Like, let me know in the comments. I never used to like take a highlighting concealer right above my upper lip, but then I tried it one day because I was trying a Scott Barnes makeup tutorial and I'm not gonna lie, it changed my life. First I was like, this seems counterproductive. All right, I want a refund. I haven't paid for anything yet, but I want a refund. I started actually doing it and I was like, wait, this actually like kind of dispels the look of the mustache, the look and the feel. And it also helps because the bottom half of my face is darker. So it kind of adds a really nice balance. Now, the thing that I love, I love that these tips are going viral on TikTok. I don't like the way that they're presented because people literally be like, guys, let me tell you about this hack I just discovered. I have been using powder. It's amazing, have you ever heard of it? It's like, girl, yeah, yeah, yeah. We've been doing that for like decades, okay? Fall in line. So anyway, this tip really does work. It's super effective and it's also great for people like me who a lot of times are, are running late and have to do like 50 things at once. Like it really does work. So now this would be another layer of setting spray. If you're nasty. It honestly really does not hurt to layer that much setting spray. It's not gonna kill you. But then again, don't go overboard because you probably don't wanna run out of this in like two business days, girl. This is going to not be intended to shade the people who do this technique because I feel like this is obviously a very clickbaity, attention grabby technique. But I do have to be honest because that's why y'all come here for it. Don't shoot the messenger. The layering of like five pumps of foundation, there is no scenario, no scenario at all where you have to do that. It does not matter how much acne scarring you have. It doesn't even matter how much coverage you require. There's really no need to dispel 50% of the foundation bottle onto your face and blend it out. There's like a group on TikTok that calls themselves like the trust the process crew. And it's like, but even the after does not really work for the average person. So unfortunately, what probably looks really cool on TikTok and on the phone in real life, I've seen what happens when people wear a ton of foundation and in my opinion it just does not look flattering and it's not necessary but again I really feel like these people kind of know that and I think they're just having fun with it and they do it because it, it is very like clickbaity like and that's what you have to do on these apps girl to like stand out you have to like stand out somehow some way so I get it but today we're not gonna do that and if you thought we were you came to the wrong place or I misled you for my thumbnail sorry I had to clickbait you as well so eh. We're skipping that and we're going to try the new NYX Cosmetics Total Control Pro Drops. So this foundation is not actually new. This is a relaunch of this foundation and it's vegan and it's cruelty free. And the really cool thing about this is actually a catch 22 because they've made this foundation in a way that it's adjustable. So there are color correctors. I don't know if you've ever seen these before, but like yellow is when you want to add warmth to a foundation. and you add the orange when you wanna add more cool or you wanna make a formula look more red. This is what makes this launch really unique and really cool. The irony though is that the shades are spot on. This is actually a really unique launch in that as a dark skinned woman, I typically struggle with finding good matches, let alone multiple good matches. There's like three colors in this new relaunch of this foundation that I can actually comfortably use. So I don't really need droplets and adjustments at all, at least not right now. But it's great because like in the summer, let's say I need to cool something down to make me look a little bit more bronze, make me look a little bit more flesh. I can use the cool adjuster drops. Warmth is I think great all year round for those of us that have olive and golden complexions. They also even have a liquid 
liquid highlighter that comes in warm and cool. I can't find cool for some reason, but warm is a actual like liquid highlighter. It has like shimmer. This is a very popular technique that some people like to add to their foundations. And there's also a dark and a light. So if you need to lighten a foundation, you have a pure white and you have a dark shade that's pretty deep and heavily concentrated. So it'll add more richness to a foundation. And the great thing is you don't have to necessarily use these with the NYX Total Control Pro Drops. Take these with you on vacation and use them with any of your favorites so that like if you're on the go, sometimes we go on a trip and arrive one color and then leave another because we're in the sun or we're tanning or whatever. It's great to have these on standby because that has literally happened to me so many times. And vacation pictures, sometimes it's where you have to do the most face tuning, just saying. Just for demonstrational purposes, I already know my color. I'm just gonna show you the three that I like to use because I want y'all to see how good these matches are and just potential options in case you want a shade match to me and one shade isn't available, you can also use these as a reference. So the color that I prefer is Deep Sable. It is a really beautifully medium dark golden olive shade damn near what foundation. Like if I blend this out, you're literally not gonna see it at all. Now another potential contender, just in case like Deep Sable is, wasn't available or was sold out. You know, the girls be snatching up my color. The next shade that I have is Mocha. Mocha is a little bit darker though. Now one thing that I wanna emphasize is I really appreciate the fact that NYX Cosmetics really hit on the different varying undertones. This one, Mocha, I think is a little bit more golden neutral, whereas Deep Sable is definitely more golden olive. And one thing that a lot of brands really neglect for the dark and rich category in complexion are olive undertones. I think people assume olive automatically means like light and medium. No, you can have dark skin and deep skin and have an olive undertone. It's the underlying pigment under your skin tone. Don't forget that. Cappuccino, I haven't tried, but if I had to eyeball it, I feel like it's a little light and I could probably use some of it in the center of my face, but I wanted to show y'all that as a potential contender, if you're like a hair, Cappuccino really is a highlight shade. I just wanted to show y'all you got options. So what we not gonna do is we not about to do the droplets with 50, like we not doing, we are, we've already had that talk. We are not doing that today. What I'm actually gonna do is take Deep Sable. I'm gonna shake up Deep Sable. Not only are the colors phenomenal in this new launch, the actual foundation itself, the formula is incredible. I remember doing a video, a review on this product years ago when it first came out. I remember it being more velvety, but this, I don't know. I don't know what they put in this new formula, but it, I've been loving this foundation and wearing it a lot. Even though it's been a little bit on the colder side, well, when it was cold, now it's damn near the apocalypse outside. What I like doing is I just like putting like a drop or two on my brush and then I take my setting spray and spray the brush. Ain't that the most you lying if you say this color is not a phenomenal freaking match. You lying, you lying. I concentrate most of my foundation coverage around my mouth. And to me, this is kind of how I get not only the best coverage, but I save product this way. I don't have to load on as much as I used to. I work around the concealer. Do you see how little I used? And look at how good that spread out. Now we cheated because we spot concealed with concealer earlier. Therefore we didn't need as much coverage in the first place. And the coverage in the Total Control Pro Drops foundation alone makes it so that you don't really need to load on foundation as much as you probably used to. I really, really, really like the finish of this foundation. I think it is, I don't know how to describe it. Almost still has like that velvety finish that it used to have, but I almost kind of think they peeled back a little bit more and, and focused a little bit more on the skin, just looking like skin. It doesn't look or feel like the product is just sitting on my face when I wear this foundation, I've been wearing it for weeks. I've been wearing it for weeks. Definitely long wearing, does not cake all throughout the day. And what you wanna do is move around the concealer. Don't forget to hit that chin. And then I don't even actually add more product when I get to my forehead. When I get to my forehead, whatever's left on my brush, I just kinda do a light veil of coverage just to say we put something there and we evened out. Now I told y'all, I don't believe in putting foundation on my nose, right? So this is also the step where whatever is left over on your brush, you're just gonna do a light veil of that on the sides of your nose. Don't put foundation on your nose. Let her breathe. You already got her underneath a mask. Why are you gonna disturb her even more? You feel me? Like just let whatever is left over on your brush kind of do the work for you. Nothing's gonna break up if there's really nothing there. So just keep it light, keep it minimal, and then you don't have to worry about the foundation being all cake 
stuff been separating all throughout the day. What we're left with is not only, damn there, let me just peel back, look, look at how perfect that match is. We're not only left with the perfect foundation, we're not only left with the perfect match, but girl, like, she's giving you coverage, she's giving you I am photographable, she's giving you I can wear this to school, I can wear this for picture day, I can wear this for a bride, for the bridesmaids. The coverage is really good. Like I said, didn't even need to use the adjusters because the match was perfect. What more could I even ask for? Uh, if you want to, maybe, you know, it's starting to get into the spring months, so the girls are gonna definitely do a little bit more with highlighting. I'm gonna take some of the warm drops. I do love a liquid highlight. Gonna add some shine to the skin. I'm all about products now and glow that mimics, like, the reality of what our actual skin looks like. But I don't want it to look like I didn't put on, like I want you to see the product because I paid for it, okay? It's not cheap, you don't see it. But I want it to kind of look like lit from within, right? And I feel like when you use liquid products, it just looks a little bit more believable. So I'm using a hugging brush because it's going to adhere to the curves of my cheekbones really let me pat that, follow, and hug my face shape. And notice I still have not touched translucent powder since before we did our primer. Let the cream do its thing first, and then the powder is like just the final touch. Even though highlighter has kind of taken a backseat this year, it's still very popular. I think we're just highlighting in completely different ways. I honestly don't think glow is going anywhere. We're just gonna see it placed differently and we're also gonna see different types of glow products. Give it the times, girl, because everybody's going liquid. It's like if you're still using a Blackberry and not an iPhone, I don't know what to tell you. We're all going liquid, okay? Get on the winning team. So I'm just gonna blend this out so that when you turn my side profile, you see that I'm glowing, but you're not really like, is she wearing makeup? Like, is she not? Girl, what is that? Girl, it's DNA, stop playing with me. It's DNA, stop. Now we're gonna set everything with powder, and let's be honest, baking is kind of dead. We still do it, but we just do it like in a different way. So the old school way of baking is just kind of like powdering every immediate under eye, well, not even immediate, like just damn near. Some of us was just baking our whole face, pretty much. I don't really like that much heavy powder all over my face anymore. Instead, what I'm actually going to do is concentrate most of the powder really right under the immediate eye area because basically this technique actually reflects the under eye a little bit more effectively versus when you just put powder along this entire area and like a lot of powder on this entire area, you don't really know what you're looking at and I think it makes it look more like made up and done up. So I'm gonna do it again. I'm gonna take a little bit of my translucent powder and I'm just going to really focus on the immediate like the immediate under eye area and also don't be shy to use tricks and angled sponges to get pinpointed applications of the powder you can almost kind of mimic the same routine we did with our concealer earlier and that do you see how i'm drawing a super sharp line on the outer corner of my eye yeah that has a little lift so I just have powder under the immediate eye area. I eventually will like stamp it in a little bit more, but I'm gonna let it just simmer just a little bit. Baking, the kitchen's closed, we're just gonna let it simmer, a little marination. I'm also gonna hit like my T-zone areas. I didn't even actually add more powder. I'm just using what's left over from the under eye because I still get shiny. Here's the thing, just because trends change, it doesn't necessarily mean you can't take and learn from like what used to be if it works for your skin tone and if it works for your complexion or if your skin type. So for me, I know I still have to powder. Like I can't go that damn natural because I'll be oily and greasy as hell. Then y'all be talking about me and we not gonna do that around. I'm adding a light veil of a skin tone translucent powder all over the rest of my face. Don't set in this step because it's a setting powder and you don't wanna set the powder as it is right here. Wait until you're completely done to actually do like a final mist of veil over everything. Now when I'm ready to dust off the powder under my eye, which I already did, so don't judge me, I'm about to show you again. I'm about to show you what I did. Instead of just taking an empty brush and just da 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 brushing it off, I actually go back to my skin tone powder. Great tip for those of you guys that deal with flashback or maybe you're worried that the powder was a hair too light. Take your skin tone powder and just go right over it. And I'm kind of brushing it off while also stamping it in at the same time. It's almost kind of like a two things at once. It is really the using your skin tone powder that makes everything look a little bit more seamless and less stand outish versus the typical way we used to bake. I always say used to because makeup and skin is really kind of like a journey, a non-linear journey for a lot of us. And you see us talk about tips and techniques that we really love, and then maybe we don't love them so much. So we start to kind of like, you know, share and go on that journey with all of you because I don't want y'all to think 
I'm keeping the tea because I'm not keeping the tea. I'm trying to keep y'all cute and up to date. Okay, now that I've applied my lashes, this will be the time to do the last layer of setting spray. Don't do mascara and then do this because it will be all over your cheek, by the way. Do this before you do mascara. Finish it off with the sponge. The sponge will get you right and tight. It'll just soak all of that spray into your foundation so it'll actually be effective and will actually work. And on my like skin days where like I really just want the foundation to be the focus, AKA like the everyday makeup look, didn't put on eyeshadow, didn't care, gotta go. I only had 20 minutes to do this face. I'll usually take like a brown eyeliner and either a gold pencil or like a taupe in my waterline just to kind of brighten up the eye a bit. I've definitely seen this done on TikTok, not with gold, but everybody is definitely using like white and cream liner. But the gold kind of does the same thing. It just adds a little bit of glow, a little bit of highlight and brightening to the eyes. Sometimes I literally just smudge the eyeliner out with my finger. It's really just meant to focus on the foundation, which let's be honest, looks phenomenal right now. Shout out to NYX Cosmetics. I'm gonna finish this off this look with a gloss because I'm gonna be honest, I'll be very just candid. Andrea Renee, fellow YouTuber and brown girl, really got me wanting to try these glosses from NYX Cosmetics. It's called This Is Milky Gloss. That's literally what it's called. The color that I'm gonna use is Milk, Milk the Cocoa. Mm -hmm. Oh, wait a minute. I was not expecting that coverage. Hold on! Ooh, I thought this was gonna be super sheer. I guess I was wrong. I only wear gloss at home, y'all, because you know how I feel about gloss. Me and gloss have this love affair, but I can't wear it out in public because these damn masks. But since we're here showing y'all how to get a flawless base, I'm gonna gloss on out. So that is pretty much how you get a flawless foundation routine a la Tic Tac, what the girls are doing, what is trendy, what is very hackable. I really hope you guys learned something from this technique. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Shout out again to NYX Cosmetics for being a partner and sponsor of today's video. Oh, and the surprise, how can I forget? What's the surprise? So if you are a micro influencer or creator, you will have the opportunity to win a one-on-one -on -one mentoring session with me, your girl, via NYX Cosmetics, who's gonna be partnering this opportunity. Not only will you get the chance to chat with me, but I will also be boosting and shouting you out as well. So stay tuned for more details on how you can enter this competition soon. So keep an eye out, make sure you're following me here, TikTok, the gram, the Twitter. Hell, I'm even on Pinterest now, I became a pinner. What's going on with me, I'm rebranding. Ah! So follow me everywhere at Jackie Ina so that you can be in the know of how you can get this opportunity. And good luck everybody. Thank you again for watching. Check out all of the products that I use down in the description box below. This foundation though, like probably high definitely so far this year in my top five and that says a lot considering i try a lot of complexion products i hope you guys get a chance to check it out the reformulation is definitely worth the try alone and i really hope you guys enjoyed today's video and if you did let's be honest you're working on your fifth video right you can watch one more you can watch one more i'm gonna just link her right here i'm gonna actually try to remember to link it if i don't mind your business no i'm just kidding but seriously though watch another video thank you